towards the very end, um, Hitchin, Christopher Hitchens uh, described Trotsky as a tragic figure. And Robert Service also comes in to say that um, you know he was glad to see that uh, Trotsky had almost admitted at one stage that the whole basis of the Russian Revolution in 1917 was based on a falsehood. What, what would you think about that? There are many times in history when you have people who are in a minority, who remain in a minority, but nevertheless their ideas are subsequently borne out. Take Marx and Engels. You know, to this argument were to Marx and to Engels in particular during their lifetime in the 19th century, well, your ideas don't get much traction, to use a modern phrase, with the majority of the working class you're appealing to. And, Le and uh, Engels and Marx said, well, we've been in a minority all of our lives because we stand for a social revolution, a democratic social revolution, and it's only in periods of high tension in the class struggle will our ideas find a majority, the same as Lenin and Trotsky. I mean, Lenin himself was reduced to a handful mm -hmm. following the defeat of the 1905-1907 revolution. We, the socialists and the Marxists, after the collapse of Eastern Europe and the former Soviet Union, when allegedly socialism had disappeared, we were isolated for, for 20 years. We still held to a Marxist perspective and program, and we predicted that capitalism would inevitably break down when other people were saying this was the best system for delivering the good goods and services to the majority of humankind. We've been vindicated in the current world economic crisis. Marx and Engels were vindicated by the collapse of capitalism, which was re reflected in the First World War. The Bolsheviks, Lenin and Trotsky, were vindicated on their perspectives of the Russian Revolution. And all, all that happened, in effect, is the betrayal of the working class by the social democratic leaders in 1914, the second international organization of the working class. Then the creation of the Third International, following the Russian Revolution. Then the betrayal of Stalin and Stalinism, particularly in Germany in 1933, from 19, 1929 to 1933, and the revolutionary situations before that. The betrayal of the Spanish Revolution in particular, when the Spanish workers could have taken power ten times, frankly, in that period, with a leadership equal to them. All of that led Trotsky to conclude we have to create a new international organization. It was in a difficult period, a period of revolution and of counter-revolution. But he was looking to the revolutionary wave that would come out of the Second World War. And uh, sages like Service say, well, look, he was disproved. On the contrary, the Second World War led to a revolutionary wave with the overthrow of Mussolini and his replacement by, by de Badoglio in 1943-44 in Italy. The revolutionary wave in France, when the French workers took power in Paris, when the French forces in De Gaulle were 50 miles from Paris, that's come up recently over the question of D-Day, of the revolutionary ferment in the neo-colonial world, Trotsky was right. But what he couldn't foresee is that the leaders of the communist parties at that stage and the social democracy actually sold out and, and, and betrayed the movement at that, that stage and created the political preconditions for the economic boom that really developed from 1970, 1950 to 1974-75 or 1974-3-75, depending on what, what, what view you take of the economic crisis at that stage. So therefore, his long-term perspectives, in my opinion, have been borne out. But history takes sometimes a peculiar turn. Now, it's only now that the full brilliance of Trotsky's ideas, I repeat, we don't live in the past. But we have to learn from the past, but in an entirely different period today. But what other school of thought can, can, can present to the working class, and particularly again this new generation that's coming to the fore with a clear banner, a spotless banner, of standing against capitalism, standing against the monstrosities of Stalinism, standing for honesty in the workers' movement itself, presenting your ideas in a clear and an honest fashion, and winning support on the basis of argument, not on the basis of thuggery, as unfortunately Service suggests in this uh, book and in that particular uh, program that we're commenting on. And therefore, Trotsky's ideas, in my opinion, are a beacon mm. and a way forward for people today. Christopher Hitchens comments on Trotsky's love of the polemic, and today, for you know, people looking at the political parties, they see so little difference. They see so little debate. 
um, don't you think that people today would, would, would really relish the idea of, of witnessing some of these arguments, these toing and froings that take place? In yes, I do. And, and uh, I think that service himself is, is an expression of that lack of debate. Mm. Because he will write a 600 uh, tome, go to Russia, to Russia, to Russia, have a quick look, home again, home again, write a big book that is not very scientific and objective, as I've pointed out. But when it comes to debating somebody like me, with somebody like me, somebody who considers as obscure and so on, uh, the Socialist Party is an important part of the Labour movement and the struggle in Britain, you think you would want to come along to a meeting of a thousand young people and discredit the Marxists and really present his case on Trotsky, but he turns that down. And I even said, well, don't debate with me. Debate with you or debate with any member of the Socialist Party. I'm quite happy to see them debate with service. He doesn't do that because they want everything their own way. And the reason why there's no debate or hasn't been debate up to now, that's going to change in the way it was in the past, which polemics are just clashes, you know, exchange of ideas, I hope in a friendly and in a comradely way, that if, if, um, if that's not developed up to now, then that is because all the official political parties are the same. Mm -hmm. They're really different wings of the one capitalist party. They should get together. We propose a unification conference of the Liberal Democrats, New Labour and the Tory party, because as I've said before, there's not a cigarette paper between them. And leave it free for the Labour movement to have their own mass party that will present an alternative. But this kind of wall of silence, this intellectual deadlock, this refusal to face up, to debate and discuss ideas cannot last because polemics develop when the class struggle becomes intensified. And believe you me, the class struggle is intensifying now because the capitalists are using this crisis to put the responsibility on the shoulders of working class people. And working class people will resist. I repeat, especially the new generation that we have a lot of faith in because they're not weighed down with the baggage of the past with the defeats of the past. They'll come to Leon Trotsky with open eyes and will examine him critically. We, we welcome that because we will engage in debate and discussion with them and, and, and see whether his ideas are relevant or not to the movement of working class people today. So the polemics will increase and in those polemics we can turn to Trotsky. We wouldn't use every single method of Trotsky today. We hope we can be friendly. We hope we can convince people by putting forward our ideas and the clash of ideas and so on. But nevertheless, uh, I put my ideas forward forcefully because I believe in them. I expect other people to do the same. Let's have a clash of ideas, thesis, antithesis, and hopefully a synthesis will come out of it. That means hopefully we'll get an agreement, whatever is the best arguments, we'll win support from those who are looking for answers at this particular moment in time. So are you saying that the invitation to Robert Service to come and debate with you or a member of the Socialist Party is still, is still open? It's still open. We'd even be prepared to engage in the kind of discussion that we're having here today. He can choose the chairman of his own standing if he wants, including somebody from the Hoover Institute. We are prepared to discuss with him anywhere, any currency, on any medium, he saw what wants to choose because we believe in democratic debate. We don't just talk about it. We believe in democratic debate because we think our ideas will find an echo as a result of this.